fine. That's but, fine. Uh, that's Lucy, we, Lucy, we, we do appreciate you doing this. I know you're not very well. So um, Lucy and Steffi, double act over to you. OK, perfect. So obviously I work at Kent and Canterbury and I'm a trainee BMS. I did start off as an assistant health care scientist I've done that for about a year and then because I um, finished my degree just in 2020 I decided I might as well do my portfolio um, as an assistant healthcare scientist then luckily um, a few months ago I got promoted to training BMS so that's what I've been primarily focusing on now getting my uh, portfolio done so I'm just going to be talking about the haematology lab and about two of the main um, analyzers that we use in haematology. So I'll be discussing the ESR machine auto compact and the Stego analyzer, which does our clotting samples. So Steffi, if you could go on to the next page, please. So the auto compact. So we've got a picture of it here. So it measures the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is the ESR test um, of diluted whole blood. So this basically the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is basically saying how quickly the red blood cells settle to the bottom of a test tube after a prolonged period of time. Um, so what it's testing for specifically is inflammation or infection. Um, when we're looking on the sample, when we're looking at the clinical details, if we see anything that says temporal arteritis, we would treat it as urgent because um, that is, it's basically inflammation of the arteries in the brain, which um, can be quite serious. So if we see anything like that, then we would just treat it as urgently. Um, so if we can go on to the next page. So how does it actually work? So in the analyzer, so we have the one mil of whole blood and um, gets diluted with sodium citrate when we put it on to the analyzer. Um, the diluted blood is then aspirated into a 200 millimeter long pipette. So if we can quickly just go back one, and you can see on the picture the sorry Steffi. <laughs> you can see on the picture just the top left. You can see the pipettes there, and there's actually in the picture that I took. There's one um, tube actually being used at the moment, and it just goes around every thirty minutes, um, and because that's how long it takes. So if we can go to the next slide again. So yeah, so it's over thirty minutes, um, and during this time, the plasma and the red cells. Uh, separate and it leaves the plasma at the top of the cells. Um, so the distance between the actual plasma and the cells, which is called the plasma fraction, um, is measured in millimetres and that gives us the final ESR result. Um, the results are then transferred to our system on Apex. Um, so we can have a look at them. So if we can go to the next page. So the actual screen, um, we can control most of the analyzer, so we can run it manually, automatically, um, because when we put the samples on, it would just read the barcode. So um, if it can't read the barcode for any reason, then we can just click on manual and type the barcode number in, and it will just run it um, that way. Uh, we can also have a look at previous samples to make sure they're running properly. Uh, we can check the current the status of the current samples to see how long it's got left to run and um, things like that. We can change any reagents if we need to. Um, and we can do the maintenance and the QC. We can check the QC on there as well. Uh, so if we can go to the next page. So the QC of maintenance. So we've got a picture of the QC here that we use. So there's two types of QC. We've got a normal QC and we've got an ab abnormal QC. Um, so the QC is run after the daily maintenance in the morning. It's also run at 2 p.m. every day and after any other um, special type of maintenance or any service visits um, that happen. Uh, there's also multiple types of maintenance that we use on this analyzer. So we have daily maintenance every day, weekly, monthly and free monthly. If we can go to the next slide. So we'll, I'll talk about the Stego Star Max now. So this is the clotting analyzer. Uh, so this is for the coagulation lab, which is sort of part of hematology as well. Um, so this measures uh, clotting abnorm abnormalities, um, people who are on anticoagulant therapy as well. Um, it does uh, different types of tests. So the prothrombin time, the, uh, so the PT, the APTT, uh, D-dimers, von Willebrand factor antigens, and fibrinogen. Uh, we use the blue tubes, the titrate tubes, 
And if you can see on there, there's an arrow and the blood has to be within that arrow um, for it to be viable to run. Otherwise, it's, um, it doesn't match up with the sodium citrate that's in the bottle. So if we can go to the next slide. <laughs> So the actual analyzer here, so we've got, I've labeled it up so it's sort of clear to see. So we've got the workstation at the top, which you can sort of um, see what's on board. You can check the reagents and things like that. And um, you've got your rack tray where you actually put the sample, load the samples into, your reagent straw that you can have a look at your reagents, take some out, put more in, etc. cetera. Uh, your barcode reader, which is scan your reagents to put in, your cuvette bin, and the colorimetric module. So this analyzer actually tests um, tests the samples by looking at the color of the samples. So if a sample is hemolyzed, for instance, then it will affect the results. So we can't load these samples on that hemolyzed and things like that. So that's that. So if we can go to the next slide. So we also have QCM maintenance on the Stego analyzer, which we do for all the analyzers. So the QC for this one, it's run at 4.30 in the morning. And then it's programmed to run every four hours afterwards, and then it's reviewed every six hours by the MS. Um, and we have different types of maintenance on here as well. So we have our daily maintenance, which is just the needle wash, um, and then a check of the consumables and reagents that we have in stock, um, in stock in the lab, and also what we have on the actual analyzer as well. So we can, um, we do that once a day, and we basically check in that we have enough for the next day um, and most importantly on a Friday to make sure we've got enough for over the weekend um, and then we have our monthly maintenance which is just to decontaminate all the racks that we use and to back up the stuff that we have on the Stego analyzer. So if we go to the next page. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of waste bins that we use. Um, so it's not as interesting as all the analyzers, but it's very important. So it's an important thing to talk about. So for one type of waste bin, we've got the clinical waste bin, and that's for any type of infectious waste that we have in the lab. Um, this gets disposed by incineration. And in some examples of this is anything that's in the lab that has been, um, like in, in uh, that has been, in touch with something that could potentially make it infectious, so caps that are on sample tubes, um, used gloves or masks, and anything that's potentially contaminated, basically, such as request forms or any bits of paper that's been in the lab. Um, so if we go to the next slide. And then we've got sharps containers, so we've got two different sizes. Um, they must be signed and dated when we first open them and when we close them. We would close them when they exceed the fill line, but you can see the line that's on the picture there, and it shouldn't ever go above the fill line. So examples, basically anything that's sharp that could be contaminated. So like broken glass, empty reagent bottles, needles and syringes, test tubes, with pet tips, and blood films and slides. Sorry, the next slide, please. Definitely. <laughs> And then we've got a general waste bin. So this is just for anything general. So anything that's not infectious that hasn't made it to the lab. So it's just disposed by normal rubbish. So by low temperature incineration or landfill. So some examples are paper towels after washing your hands or any sort of rubbish, for example, in the tea room, you know, at lunchtime and things like that. So that's that one in the next slide. And then just finally, we've just, I've just got a few more examples. I didn't want to go on for ages about waste but um, we've got some confidential waste as well and this obviously wouldn't be for anything that, that could be infectious that's made to the lab but it's something that we can't just throw in general waste because it's got patient information on so that will go into there and then we've got cardboard and paper waste for recycling so that's basically it does anyone have any questions for me Thank you very much, Lucy. Before anybody um, over, overwhelms us with their questions, 